Okay, so today we're going to discuss about the GMO or genetically modified organisms. Okay, so okay, the production of your GMO or genetically modified organism here requires a genetic recombination process. And speak about genetic recombination process where you try to combine the genomic structure of the host where you try to incorporate a DNA coming from a foreign uh, organisms. So this DNA from this foreign organism, you try to insert that one to the genomic structure of the host organisms. And therefore, you try to, and then you try to recombine to that. And then you try to produce your particular product. And that become here your genetically modified organisms. Okay, so once you try to introduce here a genes from the foreign uh, organisms to your host DNA, that host DNA would assume the same characteristic of the gene or the, it would assume here a product because of the incorporation or a combination of that foreign DNA. Okay, so you are doing this one, it's because here uh, the host DNA or the host organism here do not produce or do not have that particular traits or even characteristics where you could not achieve that um, uh, an improved version of the organism or the host organism here on, uh, by just having a natural mating or natural uh, recombination process. And therefore, what you need to do here is just incorporate that one to try to get a DNA of a foreign organisms and try to put that one, insert that one to the host DNA in order for that to produce a particular product. And then you wanted that one to have... Uh, you know, I try to improve with its uh, characteristics. Then you try to perform that genetic recombination. And once that you try to insert a genomic structure to the host, the host here become a GMO or genetically modified organisms. Okay, so the foreign DNA, where are you going to get the foreign DNA? You can get the foreign DNA from other organisms. It might be a bacteria, it might be a virus, it might be a parasite, or from other plant or even animals or even the human. Okay, why you are doing here genetic recombination, number one, to have here more faster, a faster and more efficient uh, delivery of particular product. So it would help here because the genes, for example, would uh, try to dictate for the production of like, for example, a particular product at a faster time, then you can do that one a much faster than the usual reproduction process if you have that uh, only with the natural, um, you know, natural way of having that organism. So all you need to do is just insert a foreign DNA, then it will produce a particular product at a faster rate. Okay, so that's one. Second one, for the improvement of the host organisms. Okay, so if you want, because you wanted that organism here like to be resistant to the pests, uh, to the different viruses, then you could afford that one by introducing a genes that would render the host here to become resistant to like the virus or even fungi or even the viruses or even the bacteria. Okay, the process of your genetic recombination could be the following. We have here the two. One is your transgenic and we have also here the cisgenic. Transgenic, okay, so it's a process of your genetic recombination wherein the DNA came from um, the different species. So I mean to say your host and your donor of your foreign DNA are of two different species. Like for example, um, this is your host here, the plant, and then your foreign DNA came from a bacteria and they are of different species and you call it once you're transgenic. Cisgenic on the other hand uh, is just a genetic combination uh, wherein the foreign DNA came from the same species of your host DNA or host organisms. For example, we have here the eggplant and another eggplant. Okay, why are you are doing here the genetic recombination? Uh, where in fact they're all they are they belong to the same species. It's because here that your host organisms will try to possess here characteristics are uh, lacking characteristics. So it try to possess here not so good characteristics, or we consider it was defective one. So your donor here is much more ano siya, uh, major perfect and kanyang uh, variety, then you can get a genes of that and transfer here to another species of that the same spe or another variety of the same species here in order for this to become much more uh, try to um, 
have this characteristic nito para magiging more or less magiging a better version siya ng species niya. And you call this one your cisgenic. Okay, we have here the various, this is a simplified uh, steps in the recombination process. So, again, the recombination process, what you are needing here would be your donor DNA. So, the donor DNA would be a same species or a different species. So, the DNA within the strand of the entire DNA of your donor here, you just need a particular area. You call that one your gene. The gene here code for a particular characteristics. So, ang characteristic nito could be being resistant to the pests, so able to be produced here like uh, rich in vitamin A, vitamin B, so any any products or any uh, characteristics or traits of that host here that you wanted it to be possessed by your host or your other organisms. So all you need to do here is just cut these genes. We try to go here for particular characteristics. And to cut that one, you are needing the enzyme restriction enzymes. But uh, based on this illustration, very easy, but in the actual uh, laboratory procedure, it will be very difficult here to, to perform this one. So we just have the summary, a very simple illustration of that. So again, you have here your genes that, that you are after of. You just need to cut this one. And then all you need to do is just insert this one to the host DNA. Okay, for you that, uh, for the host here to take up this... Then you need to combine that one by the process of ligation, ligate. Okay, we have here the enzyme DNA ligase. So the DNA ligase, we're going to combine your uh, your donor DNA to the host's DNA or genomic structure, host gene to your host, uh, your foreign gene to your host DNA. Okay, so once you combine that one, so the host here would undergo replication. As you try to replicate, since dito na ang ating foreign DNA, so as the host here going to replicate, the same through your inserted gene, we're also going to replicate, and then it will be transcribed. So this is your replication, transcription, and we have your translation. Once the process of translation is being formed here, so whatever characteristic or traits here has been encoded on this uh, gene here coming from your host DNA, that will also be produced here by the, or I mean, coming from your foreign DNA, so foreign or donor DNA here. So whatever the characteristic of this one will also be produced now by the host. And the host here will already um, manifest the characteristic coming from this, from your foreign or from your donor. Because again, the genes of that, your, um, your donor here is already possessed by the host because of the process of genetic recombination. Okay, so in the case of your bacteria, for example, so ang ginagamit with your genetic recombination would be your plasmid. Plasmid is the extra chromosomal DNA. And your bacteria, then you just need to get that one and then try to transfer to another bacteria. You could recombine by still again genetic recombination. Uh, most likely, um, genetic recombination here, uh, most likely ang host na ginagamit is the bacteria. Okay, why bacteria? Because bacteria is easy to multiply. So like for example, if you have your gene and then, then coming from the host or coming from your uh, donor, you just need to insert the bacteria. Okay, and then bacteria are going to undergo this one and try to produce it. Why bacteria ginagamit the host? Most likely because the bacteria, mabilis siya mag-replicate, mabilis siya mag-multiply. And at the same time, because of that, ang um, mabilis siya makapag-produce ng product. Like for example, your insulin na ginagamit natin. So, they are being manufactured by genetic recombination by that process. Okay, but what we are be talking today would not be on the bacteria, but on your other organisms. So, again, it could be in your plant, could be your, even your, um, even in your uh, animals. Okay, then we have here the, okay, so manufacturing of the different crops here with, which are genetically modified started in 1996. Okay, try to start here the commercialization of your genetically modified products or crops. And that's by the process of your transgenic. Again, transgenic uh, modification is that your DNA came from your, uh, from your donor, and the recipient, the hosts, are actually of different species. So among our leading genetically modified products, we have here the soybeans, we have also the maize or corn, we have also the cotton, and we have also your canola. 
either so we have here your sugar beets cassava papaya and many others or even your animals has been also the product of your genetic modification or genetic engineering by your genetic recombination process Okay, so we have here some of the examples of your genetically modified uh, crops or organisms. The first one we have here, the Bt corn. So Bt, it's been called here Bt corn because of the genes. The donor came from the Bt or your Bacillus thuringiensis. Bacillus thuringiensis is actually a gram-negative uh, Bacillus bacteria. So the gene specifically is being um, uh, donated here or being uh, this being uh, get from your Bacillus thuringiensis would be the Bt delta and the toxin. So that toxin is actually toxic to your Lepidoptera larva or your caterpillars. So itong mga Lepidoptera are actually mga okay, they are actually your caterpillars or mga pests which try to eat the corn. So since the corn here, the Bt corn possess the characteristics of your Bacillus thuringiensis being or having or possessing the endotoxin. So, pag kinain nito, mamamatay ang caterpillar and therefore, it would render your PT corn here to be resistant to that. Okay, so by having genetic recombination here coming from your, the gene coming from your Bacillus thuringiensis, this would render the PT the corn here to be, okay, what you have here is you, you are able to have a higher yield of the crops here. Why, why higher yield? It's because here much of the corn here will not die because the infestation pesticides because they possess a characteristics that would render them resistant here to your pests. Okay, another one we have here the Bt cotton. So again, the donor of the genes also your Bacillus thuringiensis, specifically the what is being uh, you get here from your Bacillus thuringiensis would be the gene we try to possess here or try to code here for the CRY toxin. This toxin would be, again, this is toxin, so it would kill the pest here if you try to eat this plant. Okay, so there's uh, the CRY toxin result here, the death of the cells in the gut, but the gut does not track of your insects, so mamamatay siya pag kinain niya. Okay, so result of this one, this would render your cotton here to be resistant to your pest. Specifically, we have here the pink ball worm, so it's also a caterpillar-like now worm. Is a pest. Um, during the first introduction of this uh, cotton, Bt cotton here, it would try to result to the devastation in the agriculture in India. It's because here, hindi siya ganun ka effective during the first introduction. But later on, they got perfected the, the entire combination process that would render this cotton, Bt cotton here to be much effective in the infestation of the friend pests, including your ball, ball worm, including your pink ball worm. Okay, then we have here other GMO. So we have your Jetropha. Jetropha here, Jetropha seeds would resemble your palm oil. So this is a, a greater source of our biofuel. And this one is also very rich in protein that could be a source of the food for the livestock. The problem with this one, um, um, this is very destructive to other plant living uh, together with this plant. So try to cause here drought because they try to utilize much of the nutrients or even water uh, where they try to be able to grow and therefore they are destructive to other neighboring plants. Then we have also here the, uh, the fortified rice or the golden rice. So it's been uh, fortified here by introduction of the genes that would have your high uh, concentration of the beta carotene. It's become here the precursor of your vitamin A. So because of this one, your fortified rice or your, this is your fortified rice fortified with the uh, high concentration of vitamin A. And this is, in effect, uh, it could help here address problem with the uh, vitamin A deficiency in our country. Because again, this is high in vitamin A. This has been uh, better here because this has been in, uh, added with the tongro and the uh, bacteria leaf blight um, genes that would render that one to be resistant to your bacteria leaf blight. So your golden rice, so its uh, effects, number one, it tried to increase the yield of your rice production, which is high in vitamin A, 
plus this also rendered that one to be resistant to your pests, including your bacteria leaf blight. Another one, GMO, we have here the soy. So the soy here uh, has been modified to become uh, resistant to your pests or herbicide. But the problem with the soy has been identified to be trying to cause your liver cancer. Then we have here the sugar beet, so you round up already sugar beets. So this is a sugar beet here which has been produced primarily. Um, it's been modified to increase the production of that one, so able to grow at a faster time while maintaining here the same sugar content. So this would this been modified also aside from able to grow here at the faster time is also being modified to uh, increase here to become resistant to your herbicide. So this would have rather it to be given uh, only less water is needed for its production, less pesticide, less toxic. But later on, it's been stopped here by the U.S. Department of Agriculture because they try to fail here. I mean, the government here tried to stop the production because the U.S. Uh, Department of Agriculture failed to give uh, environmental impact statement regarding the, um, uh, the, the effect of this one to the environment because... Um, many believe that this sugar beets here, the modified sugar beets, would have your effect to the environment. And since it is not na defend the U.S. Department of Agriculture, wala silang binigay na environmental impact statement, so the production of this crop has been stopped because of that. 